Hi there, welcome to Bites Has Piano and a happy new year. So if you've got a piano for Christmas or you have a new year's resolution, you're gonna start the piano, start learning a new skill, then this is the video for you. So this is your very first piano lesson. So this is what I would go through with students if they've never touched the piano before and they're complete beginners. These are the essential things that you really need to know before starting anything. So I'm gonna go through the key names, hand and body posture, your finger numbers, learning how to play a scale. So if you go to a teacher or if you try to learn from some more YouTube tutorials, it's not so incredibly alien to you what's been spoken about. Make sure after this video to go and watch my beginners playlist, which I've left in the description and the pinned comment below. So the first thing we are going to do is identify and name the keys on the piano. So I've positioned my camera on my piano, which is an 88 full length key piano. So I positioned it C to C. If you have like a 61 key piano, this should be your range. The very first thing you need to know is the names of the keys really, and this is very easy to learn. So you can see we have a very distinct pattern of the black keys goes in twos, threes, twos, and threes. And it's from this pattern that our eyes can tell what the name of the white keys are. So you can see here I have, it's a floppy, it's called a piano rake. So I'm gonna keep this on for the time being, and then we're gonna take it off and you're gonna test yourself. We'll just go through how to identify the keys. So they're the first seven letters of the alphabet. So here it goes A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then again. So we're not going to learn where A is first, we're actually going to identify where middle C is. So middle C, or any C, but the middle C is the most important one because it splits the piano into like treble and bass, so high notes and low notes. So C is the one that's to the left of the set of two black notes. So if you identify some more C's on your piano, the next one we'll learn is D. So D is between the two black keys. So if you identify some more Ds on your piano or keyboard. And then E is to the right of the set of two black keys. So if you identify some more E's on your piano or keyboard. And now we're gonna go up again to F, again, just in the order of the alphabet. Now we're in like the three black key territory. So we have F, which is to the left of the set of three black keys. So if you find some more Fs, one's out of shot there. <laughs> and then G is the next one. So there's like two middle notes in the three black keys. So this is like middle left. So we've got G, 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 G. And then we're gonna come to A. So this is where obviously the, it stops and then starts again at A. So the G to the A, this is where we have the, the crossover. This one is middle right. So if you find some more A's on your piano. And the last one is B. So B is to the right of the set of three black keys. So if you find some more B's, you can play with whichever fingers you want. So the most important one again is middle C. So if you identify that pitch on your keyboard or piano, it's exact C. So I'm going to take this off now <laughs> and I'm going to give you some words that are on the screen now and you're going to spell them. You can actually spell a lot of words using this combination of letters just from A to G. As long as you remember where middle C is, again, to the left of the set of two black keys, I want you to use your alphabet to count up or to count down. Please don't label your keys unless you have something that's easily removable like this, like this piano rake. Please don't use stickers that are hard to get off. Don't use markers. They are learned very, very easily. If you can spot this pattern, it is honestly a very easy thing to learn. Pause the video and have a go at spelling all of these words on the screen there. So I'll just play you a few of them. So like bag would be B, A, G. Kind of sounds like the beginning of three blind mice. Three blind 
my mice. If we spell face, play all those notes together, makes a really nice major seventh chord. Fancy. And that's spell cabbage. C A B B A G E. <laughs> and obviously, you could have used any hand. You can spell cabbage C A B B A G E if you wanted to. It's just to get you playing notes in a random order, just a silly way to get you identifying the keys. So, the next thing is hand and body posture and how to sit at the piano as well. So this is the side view of my piano and this is my piano stool. So I'm about five foot seven. I have quite long legs so I'm going to place the chair quite a way back and then you need to sit on the edge of it. We don't want, we don't want this, or we don't want to be really up close <laughs> so that you've not given your arms chance to move. So you want to be more out like this sitting on the edge of your stool and if you want to use the pedals as well you've got some leg room. Ideally you want your back to be fairly straight, you don't want to be sat too low to the piano, you don't want to be sat too low that your wrists completely slump, you want to be sat nice and high, just your wrists raised and that's it. We don't want any claw fingers, we don't want any of this, we certainly don't want that. Relaxed posture and you're giving yourself enough room for your arms to move. Now we're actually going to name your fingers, which is very important that you know the names of your fingers. So your thumbs are called ones, and then two, threes, fours, and fives. So music refers to your, your fingers as numbers, so it's important that you know them, so it's symmetrical. So one, two, three, four, five. So now you're familiar with what your fingers are called, I'm going to teach you how to play what's called a scale. And you're going to start moving your fingers around the piano in a proper and methodical, fluent way. So this is very important that you know how to navigate around the piano, around the keys, in a particular way. So it becomes a lot more instinctive and natural and you're moving around the piano in a more fluent and methodical way instead of doing this sort of thing. So I've done a whole video on what not to do with fingers, which I'll leave down below. So we're going to play something that's called C major scale, which is just as I played a moment ago, which is just all of the white keys. Most people have heard of a major scale. So we're going to start with the right hand on middle C and we're going to play one octave. So an octave, you think oct is like an octopus or an octagon, it means eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is an octave. These notes are two notes apart, so you'll call them an octave apart. So you're going to place all your fingers on with your thumb on middle C and then you're going to play D with your two, three on E, and then you're going to, whilst you're holding E, you're going to swing your thumb under to F, and then you're going to pivot on F and reposition your fingers above G, A, B, and C. So we have again one. Pivot 23, go under with your thumb to F, and then use up all your fingers, 2, 3, 4, 5. So to come down, you're going to do the opposite, so you're going to use up all your fingers first, and this time you're going to, whilst you're holding F with your thumb, you're going to go over with your 3 to E, and then 2, Let's try descending it again. So five on C, five, four, three, two, one, over, three, two, one. So all the way through we have under. You can just rock straight back down instead of repeating the top note and keep it all nice and smooth. So if you can play it nice and smooth, this is called legato playing. So this is not legato. You can hear there's a gap between each note. So legato is where you're almost slightly overlapping the notes, closing the gap 
as you go from note to note. It's a bit more of a musical way of playing. We're going to try it in the left hand now, we're going to descend first. So whatever movement your right hand does, you're ascending, your left hand will do the same movement descending because their mirror images are symmetrical. So thumb on C and then two, three, and then under to G this time with your thumb and then two, three, four, five, and back up. Use up all of your fingers. Over with your three to A, and then two, one. Try that again. Under. Use up all your fingers. Straight back up. Over with your three. So it's important to make sure that your fingers are, fingernails are short and that you're raising your wrist a little bit and that you're not sat too low to the piano or too close. So now I'm going to try doing that together at the same time. This is called a contrary motion scale or like opposite motion. So your hands are going out and then in. So it's symmetrical. So you move your fingers and you press the same fingers down at the same time. So your twos together, your threes together, etc. So you would start by playing this middle C with your thumb like that. So you're like a butterfly, which might be more uncomfortable for some if you have bigger thumbs or hands and then two. Both of your hands go under together, reposition them, two, three, four, five, and then come back in, use up all your fingers, threes, two, one, over with your threes to A and E, two, C. Let's try that again. this lesson and it's given you a few things to practice between either your first proper piano lesson with a piano teacher or just to master some of the movements we've been over and practice naming the keys and identifying the keys um, should you want to learn more from YouTube or the internet. If you would like a more structured way of learning I do have a course called the Bite Size Piano Course. I've left this linked in the description below and the pinned comment and it's aimed at people who want to learn how to read music in a bite sized steps lesson material that I teach my actual students in real life. So well done for wanting to try something new this year. Um, hopefully we get so much enjoyment out of playing the piano. Best of luck and I hope to see you in more of my videos. So that's the end of this video. If you would like to leave a request leave them in the comments section below of this video. I've also left some videos here that I think you might like so go and check those out as well. I also have a course. Visit bitesizepianocourse.co.uk and you can enrol and start learning how to read music. I'll see you in the next video.